Okay, it was a really hard physical practice, and we had staged it that way. You know, we're going to be getting into game week pretty soon, and we're in full pads. It's important we continue to work on our fundamentals, and there's certain things you can only do uh, when you go full. Uh, we didn't have any live work, but it was pretty doggone close. We're pleased with the effort, uh, pleased with uh, the engagement of our players. You know, with the length of this camp, everybody's kind of grappling with how to stage certain things. We've not had a hit fest every day, but we've We've had days where it's just been pretty heavy contact, and today was one of those days. I don't think we had anybody go down, but you know, I didn't think we had anybody go down in the scrimmage, and we lost too. So uh, we'll find out a little bit more. So at this time, questions. At linebacker has Va come along throughout camp? You know, I know he impressed you guys early the way that you guys would like, and is is he? I guess kind of secured that backup spot ahead of Ben Wisdorf there. Uh, no, I, I really don't think that's the case. You know, and, and there's times you know we. We play with three linebackers, and so we're going to look at, uh, you know, I thought Ben did some good things in the scrimmage, and we're going to continue to evaluate. Um, we certainly have our starters set, but, uh, you know, it's unrealistic to go through a, an aggressive non-conference schedule like we have and get into a what we believe is a great conference, and so we're going to need some depth, and so we're going to, we, we won't redshirt him, but uh, we'll continue to work with him. Like how neat is it from a program standpoint to see Josh Allen go mm -hmm. on a couple national radio interviews yesterday kind of kind of bring Wyoming out to the nation well, I heard bit. about that you uh -huh. know there's been a lot of uh, national mm -hmm. uh, exposure and those things benefit our program specifically but we're in hopes it benefits our, our university mm -hmm. you know there's no doubt uh, when you have a chance to be in the USA today and some things like that uh, or these national shows I think Josh has handled things well you now we've talked to him about going in uh, to the season uh, Tim's done a nice job to make sure he keeps him abreast um, you know, sometimes you can be distracted mm -hmm. and you, you, you're on some nationally recognized shows. And uh, if you don't have a good value system, those guys can lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's great, but I also want you to know uh, we value our local media mm -hmm. and value you guys. And so uh, we're glad that you're here. Mm -hmm. I know you talked a little bit about this, but um, I guess having a program that you're as familiar with as North Dakota mm -hmm. State, you know, beat Iowa last mm -hmm. year. How much of an asset is that for you guys in preparing for Iowa this year? Well, every team's different, and the makeup of this uh, team's different. Certainly our styles of play uh, are similar. Uh, we've studied the tape. Uh, you know, I applaud the guys that are up at NDSU, and they've done a great job and uh, continue to, to, to play well. I think Coach Farron said it was no fluke that uh, last year uh, North Dakota State beat them. They played better. And uh, that's, you know, teams change. Uh, I saw a great deal of improvement with Iowa during the course of the year. And uh, we're going to anticipate we'll have, have a team that's really going to be set and ready to play us. And I think we're an improved football team from where we were last year. Uh, it's, it's looking to me like to be a heck of a ball game. Do you know Kirk very well? Uh, you know, we've exchanged uh, some comments over the phone, had mm -hmm. some extended conversations. Uh, their AD, uh, Gary Barta, had mm -hmm. been here and was our scout team quarterback when I was a young secondary coach at North Dakota State. So I know Gary for a long mm -hmm. time. Uh, their offensive line coach had worked with us, and so there's a lot of similarities in the program. Great deal of mutual respect. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be a heck of a ball game. Mm -hmm. I think he's the longest tenured head coach mm -hmm. now in the FBS. I guess these days is that impressive to see a, a coach <laughs> with that kind of longevity? I think it's really impressive. Uh, one, he made a commitment to stay at Iowa during that time, and that, that typically does not happen. And I think uh, it also is an indication of, of his value system, certainly his skill set. He's one of the deans of college coaches, how they've operated. Uh, you know, they've been a clean program, high academic standards, and their football teams are always well prepared. Uh, so, it, it, you know, for me, I've never had a chance to, to coach uh, uh, since I've been a head coach. And I was an assistant coach in Nebraska. We played him a couple times. Uh, but, uh, you know, great deal of uh, respect on our part. Mm -hmm. I'm working on something about uh, Carl Granderson and Ryan Cummings. It seemed like they got to be pretty good friends when they were both kind of recovering mm -hmm. together. I guess just how helpful can it be when you're going through that process to have somebody by your side like that? Well, I, I certainly can be very aware of that. When I was a player in Nebraska, I was in a cast for eight months. And those are hard times. You know, many times uh, you, you see yourself and you're defined as, a, as an athlete. And we keep on preaching you're a student athlete. But when you're not playing, um, you know, there, there's something missing. And so... That encouragement by your teammates, uh, certainly guys who can somewhat walk in your shoes, is important. And both those two guys are high, highly spirited guys. They've gone against each other in practice, you know, Ryan being a tackle and Carl being a defensive end. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a neat deal.